it, uh, when we were discussing these things yesterday, yeah, I, I was trying to decide between which, whether I liked the way it was presented here or not. Uh, the, what it's talking about probably doesn't make a whole lot of sense until we actually start one of the problems. So looking at number one, 4x squared plus 25y squared equals 100. But when we were discussing these, the format of the equations yesterday, they looked like this. x squared oh. <laughs> x squared oh. <clears throat> plus y squared, and they're over something, all right? They're over an a squared, b squared, or possibly vice versa. Mm -hmm. And it equals what? This is the important part of this, actually. One. So this is a bit messy, I realize. So that's messy, but now this is x squared, y squared on the numerator. In the bottom of a squared and b squared. And it says a is always greater than b. That's true if you let a squared represent the larger number. But when I look at this, I see something completely different. And I'm sure you did too. But did you figure out what you needed to do to make it look like that? Or what did you try? Divide by, um, to get divided Plus, divide by, by what? 100. 100, right? <clears throat> yeah. This, getting this to a 1 oh, oh, okay. that is what sense. you have to do to make this equation work. So the one isn't just representing some arbitrary number. It really does need to be a one, and we didn't get that far into the explanation yesterday. So that means, well, we've eaten up a little bit of our room here. So it equals one. So that means I need to divide by 100 each term. So I can do that in an equation. I can divide every term by any number I want to. But if I divide 100 by 100, what do I get? One. One. Yep. And that's what I need. So it equals one. So this will, will cancel out essentially and just be a one. So here what do I have? Four and 100. What is that going to be? Oh, one over 25. 25. Oh, yeah, one over 25. So four goes into 100 how many times? 25. 25 times, and a 4 just becomes a 1. So I can write that as x squared over <coughs> 25. Now it's starting to look like our format that we need. All right, let's put a line here to kind of separate the two. And then I need plus here, and there's a plus there. So 25 and 100. So 25 goes into 100 four times, and 1. So y squared over 4. Now which number is bigger? The 25 is the bigger one. So this is the, the formula format that we'll use. We'll use the a squared underneath the x squared because that's bigger. What this is saying to do is let's say that somehow this ended up reversed and the 25 was here under the y squared and the 4 was over here. Then we would choose the other option, option 2, which puts the a squared under the y instead of here, because the A always needs to be bigger. So that's the reason you have two different formulas, but they actually look the same, because they are the same. You're just going to handle them differently depending on which number is bigger. And, and again, we learned that depending on which number was the bigger one, is going to determine which is going to be the shape of my ellipse, so whether it's going to stretch this way or stretch that way. So which way is this one going to stretch? Uh, along the x-axis, right? It would be bigger this way, not bigger this way. And we know that because the 25 is under the x squared. Now we've got a good starting point. Now we can choose what our vertices are, what the, what the well, what's the center? Uh -huh. It doesn't ask you for that, but what's the center of this ellipse? Yes. It's at zero, zero. And for right now, everything is just going to be zero, zero to make it simple. We're not, we're not moving that 
or glyphs around on the coordinate plane just yet. So it's zero, zero. So then our vertices, what are the vertices again? So those are the points at which it intersects each axis, basically, since it's at zero, zero. So if my graph here is like this, this is my what axis? Y, this is X. So the vertices, if I'm going to have a ellipse that's going to look like this, just make it nice and big. This is supposed to be the same distance here to here and here to here, here to here and here to here. And the vertices are what points? This, 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 and this. But it would essentially be, remember when we did our parabolas? We had this minimum point here, or maybe we had a parabola that looked like this. We had this maximum point, the point at which the arc starts to make that turn. In an ellipse, how many points like that do you have? Four. You have four of them, not just one. Because this is an arc that's making a turn right there. This is an arc, kind of like have a parabola that's making a turn right there. Here, just a wider one, and then here again. Now these are the same, and these two are the same, but you have four of those points. So we, this was the vertex of the parabola. And these are the vertices of the ellipse. These are four of them. So imagine if you took four parabolas and stuck them all together. Essentially, that's what you have here. And that's why you have four different vertex points, or we call them vertices. And how do you know what they are? Well, you use your equation, and then it is in this format. So we don't need this right now. We know some things about this based upon what we were given. Our vertices are a, comma zero, negative a, comma zero, zero, comma b and zero comma negative b. You have four of them, these are our four vertices. And this is where we get the information from, from a and b. Now what is a? Uh, 25. A is five, five. Oh, oh, squared. Yeah, a squared yeah, and b squared. So a is actually five. And B is 2. A is 5, B is 2. So if I'm writing out my vertices for this one here, what will they be? They'll be 5, comma, 0, negative 5, comma, 0, 0, comma, 2, and 0, comma, negative 2. So that will be this, 0, comma, negative 2, 0, comma, 2, uh, 5 comma 0 and negative 5 comma 0. Those are our points that make the vertex or the vertices of this ellipse. Alright, so far, so good. The next thing we need to figure out though is this. Like Loki? Yes. So we need the Foki, then like the Loki. And... Do the Loki Pokey. Uh -huh. <laughs> Loki Pokey. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that applies to the Foki. Do the Foki Pokey. We do need to figure out what it is. And there's some steps to take to get there. I don't know that it's quite the same as the dance, like the hokey pokey. Okay. Can we just make it that? Yeah. They make math a lot more fun. Right. Yeah. Well, instead of putting your right foot in, you put in your equation in. <laughs> yeah. Smooth transition. Or you, you plug your A in, you plug your B in. <laughs> that works. <laughs> You see, and you shake it off. Yeah, you shake yes. them all. Or <laughs> and you do the. You plot them. 
pokey. <laughs> do the pokey pokey and turn yourself around, and that's what it's. And that's how you get the, the ellipse. <laughs> that's how you find your C. Uh, that's how you give approximate answers for radicals. <laughs> All right, so the the points we're looking for is the C comma zero, and then of course that's negative C comma zero. And we've got a positive and negative value in each case because everything is squared. But C, what, what does C come from? C squared. The it's the C squared from the equation that we have. And it's the same for each. If you follow the, I'll let A be the bigger number no matter where it is. So again, if this was the bigger number, that would become my A. And if this was smaller, that would be the B. Even though here it says A squared, B squared, you'd actually just switch the two in your mind as far as what's represented by what. It's teaching it this way, so it's fine to stick with that. Rather than trying to switch things around, just always remember A will be the bigger number. And then let A fall under which whatever it is. Uh, and that should make a bit more sense now when you see that this here is A and B. They're going to stretch in those directions. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, if A is the bigger number, then they actually kind of switch around. Uh, these would these would invert, and this here is actually zero b, but this would become zero a if a was bigger. Does that make sense? That's the part where I think it's a little confusing, because the coordinate actually changes on which axis you put it on based on if it's bigger or not. Maybe we'll come across that in our next problem. So yeah, we're figuring this out from this c squared equals, what is it? a squared minus b squared. Mm -hmm. We already have a and b. And we actually have them squared. And that's why the a needs to be the bigger number, because we're going to subtract it. So 25 minus 4 gives me... 21. 21. Okay. <laughs> c squared equals 21. <clears throat> oh. Okay, what do you get? 4.58. 4.58, right? Oh. Oh. That would be correct amundo. Now, how close is that uh, pokey, pointy <laughs> to, uh, to my actual vertex or one of my vertices? It's pretty close. It's going to be just inside an area here, right? We'll put the dot there. We'll put the dot there. And this becomes negative 4.58. And this is 4.58. I got that from here. It says square root of both sides gives me plus or minus 4.58. So square root of 21, it's a decimal. So the foci is plus or minus 4.58. That's what you're writing in like, right? Yes. So C, or the, so the foci is the points. C is its own thing. And then you plug the C into here. So oh, yeah. we have 4.58 comma 0. <clears throat> So if I wanted to label it correctly and more completely, that's how I would write it. So it's negative 4.580, 4.580 here. So four vertices, two foci, as we're calling it, or foci, or the foci posi. Pokey pokey? Pokey pokey. Uh, is as is as follows. So we ha we're halfway there to our answer. The semi-major, we described this as best we could yesterday. So we realized that our axes are what? Well, they follow our A and B as well. So they can actually change. 
So in this case, where was A? A is here. Okay, I'm just going to kind of put a big A so we can think in terms of A, negative A, B, negative B. You don't have to do this part, but I'm just reminding us where our A's are at, where our B's are at. Because our A is our which axis? Major or minor? Uh, major. Major one, right? So that makes this the major axis, and this half the what? What are we calling that? Semi, semi. or semi major axis. Mm -hmm. So semi major axis follows the A, the minor follows the B, so our semi major axis length should be what? Uh, five. Five. Because what? This distance here is five. And this distance also is five. <laughs> <laughs> one of them's like perfect and the other one's like, the other one's mm, like well, it's melting. It's starting to look like we're like sort of diagramming a burger. I thought it was a potato. Yeah, potato. We well, should actually diagram so a potato. These are the toppings like in the burger. Maybe it's a manwich. Anybody remember a manwich? Can we still call it manwich today? I don't know. Is that like one of those what? pork things? What? I have no <laughs> idea what you're saying. What? Something about a manwich. Yeah, man. Wouldn't that be a wizard? Why not? <laughs> <laughs> I never thought about it that way. Would be a war. If you go to the grocery store, you can buy manwich in a can. <laughs> in a can. <laughs> That's disgusting. <laughs> it's, uh, but it was the, it's not the pulled pork stuff or the some sort of weird meat. It's very much like a pulled pork sandwich, only substitute beef, like ground beef. Oh. And it's a, it's so a, like a sloppy it's joe. It's a sauce. Yeah, it's like Sandwich. a sloppy joe. Yeah. So they're very, very much the same kind of thing. I'm not sure really what the specific differences between Sloppy Joe and Manwich would be. You could call it a sandwich. genderless witch. I'm not sure how to, how to handle that. You know, it, it's confusing. Why is it witch though? <laughs> like, I like well, sandwich. Sandwich. But manwich. I don't know why. Yeah, that's the part I'm confused Sam about. Sandwich. <laughs> sandwich. You're a Courtney witch. All right, we're nearly done. We got a, we got our semi. So I'm just going to abbreviate our semi major is, and this is axis. So we have two, and this is the minor. Major was what? Did we say five? Five. five. And what is this? Three. Two. That's what I was looking at my other answer. I was looking at number two. Uh, two, four, six, eight, right? <laughs> this is two. Remember, this is a zero. So from zero, zero to zero, two is two. One, two. One, negative two. Uh, so this distance in both cases is, is a distance of two. Two from here to here, two from here to here. I don't know, this doesn't look like it on the drawing. And that's so one problem! And we did it! <laughs> and we did it. Alright, now you should feel much more confident about your answers for two and three and how good they were. Oh, I'm confident they were horrible. See, I wrote them in invisible ink. Two is a URE. Alright, so let's, let's get rid of all this and see what we got for two. So what do you have for two then for your vertices? Zero, four, zero, negative four, three, zero, negative three, zero. I don't know if that's right, but that's what I have. Okay. Oh. All that is relevant. This we don't need. Okay. <laughs> Alright, yeah, all that is just generic. Alright, so number two, let's write the problem so we're all looking at it together. 16x squared plus 9y squared equals 144. I love how they're giving you perfectly squareable numbers. Ooh! Ooh. Not 
see that very much. <laughs> you'll see what? The case usually hates us and gives us like maybe one of those numbers and then the three. Would you like me to change this to 17? No, no. that's good. 16 is good. We can still do it. No. The numbers yeah. will just be more decimally. Yeah. <sighs> okay. Is it true on my calculator? We had an option it's of... Fast. Okay. It's fast. <laughs> this is fast. Well, our first step, so every time, first step, if this is not a 1, we need to get it to be a 1. one. Divide. So, divide by 144. So how many times does 16 go into 144? Um, nine times. What? Really? So 16 nine? times 9 would be 144, is that what we're saying? Yes, that's what we're saying. Alright, so 9 and 1, 9 into 144 then would be 16, yeah. 16, hey, what do you know? So if I rewrite this neatly, x squared over 9 plus y squared over 16 equals 1. Now we have something we can work with, and I look at this and realize, hmm, bigger number, A, is not under the X. So things have to switch around. You gotta switch them. Switch? Switch them. So A moves over here, and B moves over here. Mmm. Is that, is that all that moves? No, it's not. All of these suddenly don't count anymore. What? Yeah. Because if I switch these two, then I need to switch these. So now I have 0 comma a, and 0 comma negative a, and b comma 0, and negative b comma 0. Since this not the bigger number. Because a, this is still true, a is greater than b. But all of these, I switch them all, because I switched them here. This still counts. This still counts. This is switched, so these switch. That makes sense when you start to graph it and see where the points fall on the ellipse. So now I realize that this is A or B. A or B? Uh, that is B. B. Okay, so that makes this A. Or I guess A squared, really to make it more clear for now. So that means to get the B, B is going to actually be what? Three. If this is nine, square root of nine is three. So B becomes three, and this square root of 16 becomes four. four. So A is four. Yes. Now we have numbers to work with. So we can write out this sequence so we know our vertices are actually pretty similar to each other, so it's only going to be slightly bigger. But now I go 0 this way, and A is now going this way up to 4, and then down to negative 4. And then 3, and negative 3. It kind of works, so it's a little bit bigger, doesn't it? I'm not a whole ton. <clears throat> so that means my ellipse looks like this. Right there. Perfectly through that line of negative 3. Oh dear, that doesn't even look the same. But nonetheless, we know, artistically speaking, these are the same. Artistically speaking. Yeah. Oh. Uh, so then I plug these values in here, and I well, well so we labeled these, but not really all that well. Uh, zero comma four, zero comma negative four, right? <coughs> and this is three comma zero, negative three comma zero. So those are my four vertices. I would put those on the blank. Next, I need to find the what? Pokey. Oh yes, the pokey pokey. So A is 4 squared, 
which is 16. 16 minus 9. And then 3 is, or B is 3 squared, so that's 9. What's 16 minus 9? 7. 7, again with the, oh boy. So if C squared is 7, that means I need to take the square root of all sides, and what do I get for C? 2.65. I would agree. Do you all agree? 2.65 is C. Oh, but where is C? I said earlier that this is right, but that's not technically correct. Because it changes. Just like up here, I now need it to be 0, comma C, and 0, comma negative C. So if I switch these two, then everything else switches spots. Is that confusing? Yeah, uh, just, just follow that pattern and you will be fine. You can follow the pattern on page 20 and, and it will work. Uh, it's one way to do it. Okay, so that means I need to go from 0 to 2. 0.65. And this is my one of. And then down here somewhere, zero, negative 2.65. I'm labeling them both as foci. These are this is the focus. That's the focus. You have two focus points or foci or foci. For short, or for plural, if it's plural. Oh. As you have there, too. Focuses. So. I like foci. Mm -hmm. Focuses and vertexes. Do you suppose that that's what they call them at the Ford dealership? Foci? This is our foci section. Because they sell the Ford Focus. And they have many oh! I don't know anything I about cars. Know anymore, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, look at our focus. So that was a car joke and a dad joke rolled into one. So. Oh, roll. Uh, You're uh, welcome. Roll. Wait. <laughs> wait, was that not a joke? Not necessarily, but uh, I, mean, I like where you went with it. You know. <laughs> kind of pulled that out of thin air a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, out of thick air. Out of thick air. <laughs> Nobody pulls anything out of thick air, ever. <laughs> we leave it in there because it's thick, scary, yeah. and thin. <laughs> thin air, that's where we pull stuff out of. You can pull all kind of things out of thin air. Yeah. But not the thick air. I pull my answers out of thin air. Anybody that that was Maybe there's just nothing in Wait, the thick air. Wait, those came from not my mind, but right. from elsewhere. So, yeah. from my mind, yeah, I saw them in your mind and was like, okay. So, before, on our other graph, our A's were where? They were out this way, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the B's were this way. Now, though, A's are up this way, and B's are out this way. So, it switched. Again, everything switched, all because the numbers were bigger. This is the one in particular that I think is interesting the way it's being presented to you. We like things to be standard and constant and always work in math. Mm -hmm. And in this case, we're catering our formula around the problem. Mm. You notice that? It's a little different than sometimes we do. In other cases, you just have a standard format. You know, I've got this standard format. I've got a lot of standard forms for things. And then whatever the problem comes out to be, that's what I, I just deal with. I just plug those values into the problem. Here, based on how my problem appears, I actually adjust my formula a little bit. There are two different formulas uh, in a sense. Uh, this is just one way of understanding it. So that's why it feels like maybe something's shifting around, but it's, it's not actually. We're just realizing that no matter what I did, the, the values would still work this way. The x values are still where they need to be, and the y values are still where they need to be, they're just bigger. Um, so the ellipse goes this direction. So that, I said all that to say, now what is my 
semi major axis Three, value. Three, four. Four. Four? Yeah. And semi minor? Three. 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 Because this is A and this is B. So they're A and B. A and B. A and B. Oh, they're always going to be A and always going to be B. And you had those values earlier. So that is majors four, minors three. Will the semi major axis always be the bigger number? Major axis. A major will always be the bigger number. Uh -huh. No. <clears throat> Never. Cannot repeat the science. <laughs> Wait, what was the what? Okay, what so we that? finished number two. Alright. Number three is done in the same way. So I think we could probably safely skip that one. If you feel really confident about these two, because they, yes. if you take a while to do, we need to look at the next page.